Hey guys, welcome back to the lab. This is uh, part four, where we're going to be installing uh, WDS, which is short for Windows Deployment Services. Uh, WDS is helpful in deploying uh, Windows images to uh, computers over the network, and WDS specifically deploys thick images, which basically means images that are not customized during deployment time. Um, it's basically like plugging in an ISO, uh, or sorry, like, you know, putting in a USB with Windows on that and installing it that way just over the network. There are some customizations that we can do, uh, but mostly WDS is used for deploying pre-made images. So I've created a VM here, called it Lab Deploy 1. Uh, here we're going to be installing the Windows Deployment Services role. I've already domain joined it and uh, configured all those settings. So in Server Manager, we're going to just head back to Add Roles and Features, uh, go through the defaults here, selecting our appropriate server. And on the bottom here, you see Windows Deployment Services. So let's check this box and uh, go through all the default settings. And if we need to restart, we'll restart and install. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back when the role is done installing. All right, Server Manager is telling us here that uh, the role has finished installing, so we're going to go ahead and close out of that. And under the Tools menu in Server uh, Manager, we're going to open up Windows Deployment Services. Okay. Uh, next thing that you're going to need is you're going to need the source files for the version of Windows that you want to install. Now I have these on the desktop already. I have Server 2012 R2 and Windows 10 LTSB and a boot file. You can get these by uh, using a uh, pre-made ISO that you can download from Microsoft. And I'm going to show you that. I've mounted uh, one from Microsoft to this computer here. And if I open it up and open the sources folder, we're going to locate the boot.wim file and the install.wim file. So these are the two files that you're going to need uh, to get WDS to work. Okay, so. I've made some customizations to my WIM files, uh, but you can just use the defaults. That that doesn't really matter. So in uh, Windows Deployment Services, we're going to expand our uh, servers, and you're going to see here where it says Lab Deploy One, which is the local server. Let's go ahead and configure it, and um, I'm going to go ahead and integrate this server with Active Directory since that's where uh, I'm installing it. In my infrastructure, we do have Active Directory. You can do a standalone server. Uh, there's very little difference, but in our case, I'm going to prefer to do uh, integrate integration with Active Directory. I'm going to choose the default paths for uh, WDS. This is going to be important for you to make sure you have enough disk space. So I've allocated 120 uh, gigs to this uh, VM. If you're using a lab, then you can do that. Or if you have a secondary disk that's larger, you might want to store data there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, hit next. We're going to tell it to uh, to respond to all client computers. And we're not going to need administrator approval. And we're going to just wait for it to finish com com uh, configuring. And then I'm going to uncheck the box to add images to the server. And then we're going to finish. Now you can see here in the panel on the left side, you have install images and boot images. So under boot images, I'm going to right click this and select add boot image. And I'm going to use the image that I have uh, already have on my desktop. The key thing to remember here is that WDS can understand the difference between 32-bit and 64-bit. So I added a 64-bit boot.wim. So that means if I try to boot a 32-bit uh, machine, this will not work. Also, uh, you're going to want to use the latest boot.wim available. Uh, so for example, if you're installing Server 2016 or Windows 10, pull the boot.wim from there, and you can use that boot uh, boot.wim file to install previous versions of Windows. Now if you uh, use a Windows 7 boot.wim and try to use that to install Windows 10, it will most likely fail. So I'm going to be installing Server 2012 and Windows 10, and with that I just need one boot image. Okay, so under Install Images, I'm just going to go ahead and um, give some organization for myself, and I'm going to create a folder called Client, and I'm going to create a group called Server. 
Okay, under server, I'm going to go ahead and select the 2012 R2 WIM file that I have. Uh, and you can see here, that's the name. You can change the name if you'd like, but I'm just going to stick with the defaults. And it's going to uh, add that uh, to our server. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm also going to add my Windows 10 uh, image and pause the video while I do that. All right, so the images have just been added, and you can see that under my client, I have Windows 10, and under server, I have server 2012 R2. Uh, the server, you can see there's a little green uh, triangle. That means So we're pretty much set. That's really all we need to do. We have a boot image, and we have our uh, install images. So now what we need to do is we need to pull up another uh, VM, and we gotta make sure that the uh, boot from network adapter is set first. So then we're just going to power it on and you're going to see it's going to do a Pixie network boot. So you can see here it's going to perform a DHCP uh, negotiation and you'll see that it, it uh, found our deploy server. So let's go ahead and press enter and uh, you'll see this start to work as expected. Now we're going to make a couple of changes uh, to an unattended file because I personally get frustrated in my lab. Uh, when it asks you for a username and password every time I do this. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to customize that a little bit. Uh, just give it a sec here to load. Slowly but surely it will come up. All right, uh, you can see here it says the language selection. So we're going to select next and it's going to ask us for a username. Uh, you can use any domain user. You don't have to have any special rights. So I'm just going to uh, use my credentials. And you can see that it pulls up the two images that we have. We have the server and we have Windows 10. So I'm just going to click on uh, server. Well, let's just do 10 since this VM is called client. So I'll select next and I'll remove these partitions that were here before. Uh, I was testing a few things. And I'll start the install, pause the video, and show you that it works. Okay, I'll be back. So we're back, everything just finished installing, and now, just as you would have with a uh, ISO or USB installer, we're, gonna, we're at the Windows setup screen. So let's just go through a couple of uh, things here. I'm just going to use Express Settings because we're going to end up wiping this anyway. Um, and you'll see that everything is working as expected. I'm going to show you a couple of caveats that uh, by default with WDS that are set up and that will change um, just so you can see all the functionality but uh, that's a good uh, I think understanding of how it works. So we're going to just select uh, let's just go back there so I am explaining what I'm doing We're going to join a local Active Directory uh, domain, and we're not using Azure Active Directory, so we're going to skip that completely. And I'm going to just create a temp user. And here is Windows going through the uh, general uh, welcome video. Still going. I should probably assign more cores to these VMs in the future so that this goes through a little quicker. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Windows is starting up. All right, everything looks good. And we'll take a look at the uh, settings here. You could see that out of the box, two things happened with WDS. The first thing is it asks us for a username and password uh, to get through that, that setup, which is a good thing, but I don't like it because this is a lab and uh, I don't like getting bothered by that. And second, you could see that this computer is already domain joined. Now, when we set up Windows, we did select join a local Active Directory domain, but in Windows, that does not actually do a domain join. That just lets you create a local user, so then you can domain join on your own later. WDS did some work for us and it uh, did a domain join. You may or may not like that depending on what you're doing with WDS, but in the lab I'm going to show you how to disable that. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that, that system and let's go back to our deployment server. In WDS we're going to right click on the server and select properties 
And we're going to go through these uh, tabs because I don't exactly remember uh, which one it is. Uh, it says here, let's see, under client, there's a checkbox to do not join the client to a domain after installation. So we're probably going to, in my case, I'm going to want to do that since I don't want my systems to be domain joined automatically. And second, there's a unintended installation. An unintended XML file is a file that lets you customize some Windows settings during deployment, uh, like specifying passwords, specifying local users, stuff like that. In my case, I'm going to just enable it, and I've already created a, an intent file for skipping that initial logon screen, and I'm setting this to be 64-bit uh, UEFI, since that's how Hyper-V works. So I'm going to apply that setting, and I'm going to pull up this uh, VM here. I'm going to just tell it to boot from the network adapter. Okay, and then I just want to show you what happens. So now when we turn it on and we do our initial uh, network boot, it's going to take us straight to the operating system selection. We're going to bypass the uh, logon uh, user completely. Now, that's that. In my case, that was accomplished by me creating a utility accounts OU, and I created a deployer user. And again, like I said, it does not have to have any special rights. It's just a domain user, and that lets you domain join. So uh, you could see WDS is initial, or like the VM here is initializing. And hopefully, if everything if I did the XML file correctly, it's going to skip the logon screen and the language selection screen uh, for us. I'm not going to pause the video so you don't see that I'm lying, and here we go. Uh, it takes us straight to this uh, screen, which is exactly what I wanted. So uh, that's, in a nutshell, how to set up Windows Deployment Services and uh, how to do a Pixie Boot on another system. I'm going to just uh, keep talking here for a moment and show you how to make that XML file for the password since um, if you're a first time, if you're doing this for the first time, it might be a little confusing. So what I did was I just Googled it, WDS sample unattend file. And there's a TechNet article from Microsoft. Okay, and then I just took this and I took this initial file that they gave me and I just modified it a little bit. So I'm going to place it here on the desktop Okay, I'm going to save it as an XML file. All right, so you can see here that the first uh, portion, logon, says username, domain, and password. So essentially what I did was uh, I skipped image selection, so I deleted this whole section. Uh, I'm going to keep that there. You want to make sure that when you're doing this, the way XML works, there's like a start tag and then there's an end tag. You want to make sure you delete the things between the tags. You don't want to make any errors here, otherwise your XML file will fail. So you can see there is a section for disk configuration. Uh, so you could don't have, you can skip the uh, disk selection and disk format partition uh, information. I'm going to just delete that. And that's almost it. So there's a second part here for another component. I'm going to go ahead and delete this as well. And there you go. One thing you do have to change is the process architecture. Since uh, I have 64 bits on my Hyper-V, I'm going to change this to AMD64. And then here you're just going to change the values. So my user was deployer. My domain is lab.local. And the password was just password123. OK? So now you have this unattend file. We can close out of uh, these things. You can open up your deployment uh, installation directory, which is C remote installed by default. And there's a folder called WDS client unattend. Go ahead and drag your file in there. And then when you're in the server properties under the client tab, you can browse and select that uh, unattend file. Uh, that's uh, how to create the file, and that's how to set up WDS.